Hey guys, CB Super. I made this quick little microscope uh, cell thing where, you know, the cells are kind of all like, you know, coming together and um, where they're kind of creating like one larger cell. I'm going to show you how I made this, but first I want to give credit to uh, Simon Usbell. Simon Usbell came out with this um, technique. I don't know if he came up with it or what, um, but I saw on a Apple Motion. So Apple Motion is another compositing program, but he did this uh, really cool cell division thing. I'm not going to show the whole video. Basically where these two cells just separate. I thought that was really cool the way that he did it. I'm going to show you how to do it today. I'm not going to recreate his thing because I'm I really don't believe in recreating tutorials that other people have already done. Uh, but I did like this technique and I'm a big fan of stealing good techniques even if they're from different programs. You can you can always watch like After Effects tutorials, you can watch uh, Blender tutorials, you can watch all kinds of different tutorials and take those techniques and bring them into DaVinci because DaVinci has, you know, most of all the same tools that all these other compositing programs have. Um, you just have to, you know, kind of be smart and uh, creative, more importantly. So I'm going to show how to do that real quickly. Um, first, I'm going to show you the technique uh, that it takes to, to get that melding look. And then I'm going to show you how you could do your own sort of uh, electron microscope things. Um, so first thing you want to do is let's go ahead and bring out a couple of ellipses and that's fine that they're attached to each other. And let's go ahead and drive them up here real quick and let's just separate them. Uh, we might make them smaller. Uh, they, they don't have to be the same size, it doesn't really matter. And we'll just kind of move them on opposite sides for now. The way that this effect works is we're going to create a Gaussian blur. We're going to blur it out a lot. So let's go ahead and start there. Um, shift space, type in Gaussian, G-A-U. And let's just go ahead and, oh, so by default, and I always forget this, I don't know why, but um, it's going to mask into this. So we don't necessarily want it masked. So if you just uh, either hold down the Alt button and just pipe it in again, hit source, or you can just drop it right onto that yellow icon there. Um, so here we are. Now we were just going to blur it up. Now the amount that you want to blur it to is um, is kind of you know it's kind of something that you just play with. Uh, usually you can get away with if it's this large, you can just blur it all the way out, and that should be fine. Some items, you know, they might not need quite as much blur. Uh, it just all really depends. So just you know, you're gonna have to play around with that part a little bit. Um, and after the blur, so in Simon's tutorial, he uses the levels. You know, we don't really have levels, but what we do have is we have a brightness and contrast that we can use very similar to, you know, a levels. So in brightness and contrast, we don't necessarily want to mess with the RGB. So you can go ahead and click off those and just click on the alpha, because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be compressing the alpha here. Now, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is take this gamma and just turn it all the way down. And then with the gain, you can slowly start to lift the gain, and that's going to get you your object back. Not every object is going to be perfect. Um, if I was to do this, I'll show you. Uh, say I was to do a square or a rectangle. Now I pipe this in through the same process. It gets blurred out, um, and then you'll notice the corners are gone. Um, why are the corners gone? Well, I mean, look at it, what we did when we blurred it. You'll notice that there are no hard corners left because of the way that the blur works. So we're kind of losing some of that. And that's okay. Just keep that in mind that if you have an object that has really sharp corners, you're going to lose most of that corner detail. It's just going to kind of, you know, take it away from you. But, you know, knowing that we can kind of work around it. Uh, this is still a pretty cool effect. So I like to use ellipses because you really lose nothing. Um, one thing to take note of is if we look in here, we notice we get this really nice jagged line, which doesn't look very cool. And what you can do to kind of combat that is just take the gamma, you can hold down the command button and just slowly start to lift it until you get this nice uh, blurred out look on the edge again. Um, so pretty much now we're already done. Like I can take this over here and I can move it across and you'll see, oh wow, that's really cool, right? Um, you can move it all the way around it. Uh, they can kind of come together and they can come apart. And that's what Simon did in, in his tutorial. 
Um, but let's show how we can uh, apply this to, say, a, uh, a particle system. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring in two nodes, a particle emitter and a particle render. And actually, in between this, I'm also going to bring in a turbulence, so a particle turbulence node. I'm going to start over here on the render, and I'm going to go ahead and pre-roll. And I'm going to turn this pre-generated frame, so turn it all the way up to 100. In my particle emitter, I'm actually going to turn this down to, I don't know, like 0.1, maybe. I'm actually going to move this over just a little bit. I'm going to bring out a merge node. Ugh, again? Really? Come on. Currently, there is a bug inside of uh, DaVinci where it seems like half the time I can't connect the P render to anything, right? Um, super annoying. For whatever reason, sometimes you just need to jump out of this project and back in, which is a little bit ridiculous, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and add back in the, the turbulence, come into this emitter, and we drop this. I'm going to drop this down to like 0.1, just so I can show you guys what this looks like. Uh, so inside the region. I'm going to go from sphere. I'm just going to go to rectangle and I'm going to push this width and the height out to max up to the frame. And that's actually bigger than it needs to be. So let me bring the height down. All right. That's probably good. Okay. Um, and then in the admitter, uh, in the style, I'm going to go from point to actually, you know what, instead of point or blob or any of these other things that we normally use, we can actually use a bitmap. And in the bitmap, you'll notice that once I click on that bitmap, it adds in this input. So I can take, say, an ellipse. Maybe I'll size it down a little bit, kind of like the ellipse that we had earlier. And I'll just plug this into the emitter. So now I have ellipses, um, but I only have one, and that's not enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come into this P render. And I'm, where it says pre-generated frames, I'm going to go just turn this up to 100. So it's as if it's starting at uh, frame 100. I'm also going to kill particles and leave the view, um, just because I don't need them if they're not in view. And now you'll see what these things are doing. They're just kind of uh, floating around. Um, I might need a few more because I don't think they're actually going to intersect with each other. Now you know what I'll do is I'll make them larger. So in style, down here in size controls, you can just turn them up and that makes them nice and big. And that'll work. So there's a bunch of other things that we can do, but we're not gonna do them today. So uh, with just the turbulence added, it just gives it a little bit of movement. Um, they're not gonna be moving in any particular direction. They have the same amount for X, Y, and Z. Uh, we don't really need the Z. All right, so in this P renderer, uh, we've got those all set up. Now we can get rid of this merge. We shouldn't need it anymore. And we can actually come grab this uh, Gaussian blur and brightness and we can plug it in. And I want to show you something. So if we take this, you'll notice it blurs it out pretty good. Maybe, maybe a little bit too much. We can probably back down that blur some. Be right about there. Looks okay. All right. And then come back into the brightness contrast. You'll notice that we get like an orb effect thing. And I think it's because there is no additional pixels to blur it into, which is unfortunate because um, we're using the alpha channels, but I find that it's almost best to just throw in a bitmap node in between here. Um, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow the pixels now to blur into the blackness. And so when we bring it back, which we're gonna probably have to correct the gamma, nope, the current gamma looks okay. Uh, when we bring it back to size, um, it, it all kind of makes sense. And so now when we play it, you'll see that they are uh, melding together just fine. Uh, they're moving, um, it's pretty cool. So what I did in the, uh, the original there was, I think I just added uh, my own glow here. And of course, um, see one thing that my uh, glow does though, is it strips the background. So if you want to do it this way, you're actually going to have to uh, reintroduce another background, which, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, you're probably going to want to do that anyways. 
Um, so we can just bring a background in here, plug it into the background. Okay, and so one thing that's kind of cool is um, what I did uh, in the in the microscope, obviously, was I just added a ellipse, and of course I added just a little bit of soft edge, so it kind of had a, uh, a look to it. Um, this obviously isn't the same look, so in the glow, uh, you can change some things. And one of the things I did was um, I turned down this, uh, turned down the core size, but then I also turned down this core blend. And um, the reason I turned down the core blend was because I actually changed the core color. So say you want um, like a green or something and then you could change this core to like a red and you can change this back to normal. And now when you start blurring this you can get like different effects. You can also have a uh, more of a blur to the core. And you can kind of like tailor your coloring, you know, just to get, uh, you know, a different effect. Uh, and you guys can play around with that. Um, this will be coming out soon. You can also add in the screen glow so it looks like it's in its own, like ooze. That's pretty much all I did. Um, oh, actually, you know what? There was one more thing that I did was I just added a TV node. And I turned the scan lines all the way down and I went to the power and you can turn the power you know it doesn't have to be super big you can even give it a little bit more graininess and then in random you're gonna have to actually give yourself an expression just by hitting the equal sign and then come down here and you can just do time asterisk uh, like 0 0.05 and what that'll do is for it'll as this time runs, it'll just uh, randomize and keep moving this uh, this noise so that it'll actually look like it's a you know like an electron microscope maybe looks I don't really actually even know. Uh, and you of course just you're gonna want to take this ellipse and you can just pipe it right back into this TV so now it will mask out um, the black parts which you probably wouldn't see or you wouldn't notice noise so. You know, just gives it a somewhat more realistic effect. So that's pretty much it for me. If you guys have any uh, questions or comments or, you know, I'd love to see what you guys actually do with this. Uh, if you do anything in the future, please let me know. Uh, also, you know, go check out that uh, that video, that tutorial by uh, Simon Uzbel. I think uh, his, his cell version looked really great. And uh, I went and did my own just based on his tutorial and, you know, you... Don't feel like you can only watch DaVinci or Resolve Fusion uh, tutorials. You should be watching After Effects, Apple Motion, Nuke Compositing. Like, you know, just go out and get as much knowledge as you can and then bring it back into your free program where it's, you know, it's powerful enough to do all of, you know, the same things. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, appreciate it, uh, as always. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.